Welcome to Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Star's daily sports podcast. It's Tuesday, January 5th, and I'm Blair Kirkhoff. It is NFL playoff week, and things are different this year. The AFC and NFC brackets each have seven teams, one more than in previous years, and only the top seeds get a bye. That's why the Chiefs and Packers aren't playing this weekend and will begin their playoff quests the following weekend. We likely won't know the starting times of those games until this weekend's games are played. Also, it is coach firing, interviewing, and hiring season, and the Chiefs are heavily involved in that. Offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy had virtual interviews with the Atlanta Falcons and Detroit Lions on Monday, and there could be more on the horizon for Bieniemy. As of Monday afternoon, six head coaching jobs were open. It's Bieniemy's third year of interviewing for these positions, and although it was a surprise that he didn't land a job last year, I don't think stunned would be too strong of a word to describe him getting shut out again, but we'll see. In our first segment today, you'll hear Andy Reid discuss Bieniemy and his strengths as a coaching candidate. Reid hits on some other topics as well, but mostly it's about the prospect of Bieniemy following Doug Peterson and Matt Nagy out of the Chiefs offensive coordinator's role and into an NFL head coaching position. After a break, you'll hear from Patrick Mahomes and Tyron Matthew, who covered several topics with the Chiefs standouts, among them what it's been like to play in the most unusual season in NFL history. By some small miracle, no NFL regular season games were lost to the COVID-19 pandemic Although, this became the first season that an NFL game was played on every day of the week, and that happened in December alone. So, Mahomes and Matthew were asked about adjusting to the unusual circumstances, and you'll hear from them after a break. But let's get started chatting with Andy Reid, who met with reporters on Monday. You've always been very good about uh, your assistant coaches and and getting them opportunities and and getting them out there just for fans. How how can you just walk through how it works for Coach Biennemi to be in the, the job interviewing process, there are a couple of different reports out there that he's he's on the list. How does that work? And you guys make it all fit with everything you got to do getting ready for the game as well. Yeah, yeah. So Eric, uh, he, he's um, got a couple, three different things that he's looking at, and uh, there might be more uh, as the day goes on. They 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 come in kind of in groups here. So, um, uh, but he he he'll take care of business today with a couple of them and. Um, and then move on with the remainders. And, uh, and he's got, you know, a couple, three days here to deal with um, before we, we actually practice on Thursday. So um, it's a good time to get that done. Uh, in the meantime, the assistants, we, we keep rolling. So we, we keep going and uh, making sure that we pick up any uh, time that he's not here. Now, you know how EB is. I mean, he's not going to let things get in the way. I mean, he, he, He's going to stay on top of everything if he has to stay up all night to do it. So he he does a great job with all that. Let's go next to Herbie Tiope. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach. Good afternoon. Herbie. Along those same lines with Eric Biondi, I know you've always been an advocate for him to potentially land a head coaching job. But if you got a, if you had an opportunity now to provide a message this third time around to prospective employers, what would it be? Yeah, well, listen, I think he's uh, – I, I think he's top notch. I mean, at the at the risk of being redundant, um, I have not seen many guys that are as great a leader as he is of men. And in this business, that's huge. I mean, it's it, you're never going to have to worry about Eric Bieniemy. Never on the field, off the field, and um, he's going to be honest with you and straightforward. And then he knows the offense, so. Those are all, you know, those are all important things. But uh, to be a head coach, um, if you're going to survive in this business, you better be honest with the people you deal with and you better have a plan for them. Guys want to know where they're at and where they're going. And, uh, and most of us do. And when they don't have that uh, put in place, then they drift. And, um, and then that's where teams fall apart. And so he knows how to do that part and do it well. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. 
Brad, I'll have a quick follow-up to this one. Um, Coach, hey, what should teams, I know you've had a lot of success with two organizations. What should teams be looking for in a happy marriage between a coaching candidate and what would be ownership and, and the GM? Yeah, so um, somebody that can get along, it, it's a people business. And, uh, you, you know, I I just think that, um, to be able to, to bring, to unite, I think is important. And I, I think he has that ability. I mean, I watch it every day. So, I mean, I know he has that ability. And, um, and our, uh, our offense is, uh, and, and our football team, they're as tight as anybody around. And, and he talks to that offense every day. He stands in front of them and talks to them every day. And so um, I get to see it. And I've seen a couple of coaches come and go. And listen, he does it as well as anybody. And then his presentation is strong. So when he has to talk the X's and O's part, that's very strong. And he, he's, he's ready to make the move. I mean, yeah, that's, what, that's where we're at today. But it's, it's got to be a fit for an owner. And I've said this before. It's, you know, it's got to be that you know, guys talk about blinks and somebody has got to have that blink and have, have that picture in their mind that Eric Benamy can go lead their organization. And they're comfortable with that. So I know owners do not like problems. They don't like problems. They're paying you money uh, to do a job and that, and uh, not have the load of the worry thrown on their lap. And so I know he can, he can do that for, for somebody. And then this was the follow from your memory and then it's been a couple of years now, but from your memory, why did you feel initially you and Clark hit it off? And then how has that grown over the years? Yeah, well, I'd been in the league a while. So I, I had known the family uh, before I came here and I, I've said this before. I mean, which is true. Either <clears throat> I sat in those owner meetings and uh, there are just some people that I'd look at and I go, boy, I'd really, if something ever happened, I was working for a great owner. If there's something that ever happened here, I could, I could see myself working for those people. They're just good people. And the hunts were one of those families. And I just, I, I, I knew Clark, I knew his dad. And, and uh, I just go you know, that it was kind of a, I'm not going to say a no brainer because you got to think about everything, but I, I already, had the answers to the test kind of. So just by, by knowing them. Let's go next to Breland Moore. Go ahead, Breland. Hey, good morning, Andy. Um, just a quick question. Actually, I have two. They're relatively the same, both on injury fronts. Um, DeAndre Baker, you updated an us on his physical condition, but have you spoken to him since the injury and, and since you updated us last night? How is he doing, you know, mentally and emotionally? And then I just want to get your thoughts on Alex Smith. We talk about him several times throughout the course of the year, but I mean, coming back what he came through and then leading his team to playoffs last night, how incredible is that for you to see? Um, I'm so happy for him. I can't tell you. I mean, he's a beast and uh, just so mentally strong. And I'm so happy that he has a chance to, uh, you know, do this with, with Washington. They, they need him. And, um, and just his stability that he's brought. I mean, it's great for that organization. It's great for the NFL, you know, and, and for him to battle through what he did is, is tremendous. And l listen, Bake is, uh, he's actually, I, I, literally before I got on this call, a, a minute before I got on this call, I, I found out that he's actually in the building right now. And so, I, I mean, it's, uh, it's an amazing I mean, it's amazing, dude. When you saw it on the field, which I was standing right there, it, uh, 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 these doctors, the things that they can do are incredible. And if you had to have a break, uh, I guess this was the break to have because it fit back together well. And I think full recovery is, uh, unless there are any setbacks here, full recovery is, is going to be a beautiful thing for him down the road. And he'll still be able to play and do the things he did before. So that's that's what I'm happiest about. Yeah. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. 
Hey, Andy, I know we've talked a lot about Eric Bieniemy in terms of his uh, maybe possibly becoming a head coach, but you guys have a couple people in the front office, Ryan Tillis, uh, Ryan Poles, guys that could be, or excuse me, Brent Tillis, um, that could possibly be moving on to general manager positions. I just wonder from your perspective, what is it about what they've done in your building that would perhaps give them success if they were to become a general manager uh, through this hiring cycle? Yeah, well, they've, they've got uh, time to draw on. So um, uh, an experience uh, at seeing way a couple different things have been worked and um, uh, and Scott Pioli, very successful. And and then Brett, v, uh, John Dorsey and then Brett Veach. And so they've, they've got that to draw from and, uh, and to know exactly what direction they want to go. And uh, for them to have a chance to work with Brett here, this the last little bit, I think, is, has been uh, a, a good experience for him. I, Brett's a great communicator, and um, he exhausts everything, and he brings that that energy that you guys see every day. And um, he he's a uh, for them to to have that, I think, is a uh, you know to at least see how he goes. Uh, he operates. Um, it would be good for him going to these interviews. And then it's a tribute. Listen, it's a tribute to Clark and, and Mark Donovan and, and the organization on how it's presented to the league. And so they, you know, people want your guys. It's uh, that's, that means Brett's doing uh, something right there and Clark hired Brett. And so it's, it, uh, you know, that's a, that's a plus for everybody. And most of all, for these guys. I mean, they've worked their tail off, right? So I don't want to uh, – both of them have worked hard. Got time for a couple more. We'll go Todd and then Robert. Go ahead, Todd. Hey, Coach, back on Eric. I mean, he's, he's been through this process a few times. How much more prepared do you think he is right now since he's been through it before with some interviews and gone through, you know, learning a little bit more about being a coach? Is he more prepared now than he's, than he's maybe ever been? And – if you could give him advice, I'm not specifically about a team, what sort of things would you tell him if he had a choice to make on, on franchises? If uh, there's one out there that he might choose over another one. Yeah. Well, you, you kind of know if a team's interested in you as you, as you get in there and, uh, and he has a good feel to that now. I mean, you don't know it when you first go in, but um, uh, for your interview, but uh, you can, you have things to weigh here now, uh, other experiences. And then I think he's being selective on what he does. So I, I think that's important. Um, and what I tell you, yes, I mean, he's better. I mean, he's every day he does it, he's, he's better. And that's just how it goes. And he'll be the same way as a head coach. Every day he does it, he'll be better. And uh, because he works at it. And, um, I, you know, I'm, my hat goes off to him for how he's attacked this thing. I, I just, uh, as a coordinator, and, um, you know, his preparation for these interviews, I think, is tremendous, too. Hey, it's Blair. We have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners, unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Star's award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns presented on the KansasCity.com site, and it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. Your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at 50 bucks, unless you tell us to cancel. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star, and that support has never been more important. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. How adamant were you about mask wearing? I, I, I was. I was very adamant, especially because um, you don't want to. Even if you, even if you if you get COVID, uh, and I mean that's it, definitely sucks and everything like that. You don't want to help. You don't want to hurt anyone else. You don't want someone else to be doing something perfectly right, doing everything, and then you make a mistake and it, and it hurts the entire team. Um, and so I was big on it, um, and then especially with the, with the protocols and the COVID tracing. And the contact tracing and everything like that, you want to make sure that you're doing everything the right way so that if you do have someone that, that, that tests positive for whatever reason, you're not taking out the entire team. 
Patrick, with all the protocols in place, how how would you say you guys were able to keep up the sense of chemistry and camaraderie in the locker room? What what what, what was different in there, and what's allowed that to to keep thriving? Yeah, I mean, in a, in a sense, it kind of brings people together. Uh, I mean, that the fact that we're with each other every single day, um, and I mean, I know we're not right next to each other, but we're all going through this together. Um, we're all having to, to go through these protocols, wear these masks every single day for eight to twelve hours a day, um, and then and then find ways, and then we go home and be with our families. I mean, it, it was just a repetitive thing over and over again. And you, luckily enough, I have a great friendships with a lot of guys on this team, and I'm able to go through it with them um, uh, to get me through and keep me on a positive mindset every single day. Are you less able to interact? I'm sure you are, but I mean, you're still able to, you know, talk across the room or talk a couple lockers away and goof around like you might usually. Yeah, you can talk and do those different type of things. Um, you just, you can't be around people for long uh, period periods of time, which is definitely different. I mean, like this last week in practice, whenever we're letting uh, the guys get the reps, uh, chat and everything, and, and me and Travis are off to the side. I, I had to try to maintain like. I would talk to him, I'd walk off and kind of be away for a little while, and I'd walk up, we'd talk to him, and kind of hit the move around, which could be a good thing in a sense because you're talking to everybody on the team and you're not necessarily just with one person the entire time. Patrick, I was curious, um, did you do, uh, are you doing anything over this two-week break to, to stay sharp, anything out of the ordinary? Did you do anything last week when you knew you weren't going to play and this week um, to just to kind of stay into it a little bit? Um. The most, the most thing that we've done is just, I mean, we have to do it at the facility, everything. So, I mean, I've been working out a lot more than I usually do during the game week. Um, I, I threw a couple times with, with Travis and Tyreek and those guys that, that weren't playing this last week. Um, and, and we threw some extra routes kind of like off to the side whenever their guys were going. Um, you get to stay on top of stuff like that. And then, and then another big thing I did, which probably drove the coaches crazy, I drew up like 25 plays. So I was just sitting there drawing up plays forever. So – uh, hopefully I can get a few of them in and we can have a few touchdowns in the postseason. Hey Patrick, uh, this is a little bit along those lines, but, um, you know, after the uh, the Falcons game, you talked about protection calls and all that, and I know you're, you're one to, you know, take accountability and all that, but this is an offensive line. The guys in front of you haven't had that much time together. You know, it's certainly not the group that you guys had week one. Um, what are the steps? Can you let us in a little bit? How do you work with them to sort of, you know, move this process uh, forward in that. Yeah, I mean, I think we've learned a lot this over this season with having a lot of guys rotate in and, and having to build that chemistry together. And I think it's brought those guys uh, close together of, of battling through uh, good games, bad games, whatever they are. Um, and so we asked a lot of those guys. Uh, we asked them to do a lot of different things that not a lot of teams do. Um, and it usually helps us out a ton. But I think having a game like the Falcons game, it teaches us that we need to make sure that we're clear and definitive with what we're calling and what we're trying to ask them to do um, so that they, they can go out there and have success and put them in position to, to succeed. And so uh, um, I, have, I have ultimate confidence in those guys. They, they are coming to work every single day and working their tail off. And I know that we'll be able to grind through this postseason against a lot of good football teams and, and find a way to make a run. Tyron, I wanted to ask you about handling COVID this year and the the – the sort of the mental uh, work it took to get through the days and the weeks. Um, just how, um, how how difficult was that for for you guys? Well, I don't, I don't really, I didn't really look at it, you know, as a difficulty. Um, it was more so a, a commitment, you know, like a responsibility. Um, I felt like a lot of the guys in our in our locker room um, they took it serious. Um, you know, um, even, you know, guys like Patrick Mahomes, you know, just seeing him wearing his mask, you know, every day in the hallway, in the restroom, you know, in, in places in a building where you wouldn't think people need a mask. Um, so I think just that commitment, that responsibility, um, and obviously guys like Rick Burkho, uh, you know, just staying on top of us, um, I think all that factor into it. But I think at the end of the day, it was all about commitment and responsibility. Um, and I think Coach Reed kind of set the set the table, you know, pretty early, you know, in camp. Like, hey, fellas, you know, it's going to come down to this, you know, whether or not, you know, we're going to be able to get through this season and, and really be able to compete at a high level. Uh, Kyron, just along those lines, oh, Herbie, let me just jump in real quick because it's right related to that. Um, can you just talk about how COVID affected your ability, the, the team's ability to – have the chemistry you've had in the last few years. I know that that's been a that's been a big deal before, and I, I just wonder how you navigated it that way. Well, we I mean we're just trying our best to to kind of make it work. 
um, you know, um, I think, you know, so, so many different restrictions, you know, even at the lunch table, you know, it's like, it's only a few heads at the, at the table, but, you know, obviously I think, you know, a, a big part of, you know, you know, building team chemistry, building team bond, um, is hanging out outside the building. Um, but, uh, I think we've been lucky, you know, we've got some young guys that, that come to work every day and, and they buy in. So they don't necessarily, you know, need to be at my house, you know, on a Thursday or a Friday. Um, they, 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 they've been taking it serious. Um, so I think that's what I'm most proud of, of is guys, you know, just staying committed, you know, even though, you know, it's not a lot of things we can do to kind of create that bond like we have in the past. Hey, Ty, this question's a little bit about COVID, but really just about football life in general. You've got a young family. How do you balance that? How do you balance family life and football, especially when you guys are, you know, making as deep as runs as you are? Well, I just try to really prioritize my time, really. Um, I, I think, you know, obviously during the season, I'm, I'm so consumed with football, like really immersed in it. And, you know, thank God, you know, I have, you know, the people I have around me, the, the family that I have around me that that supports me, you know, in that way. Um, but any any time I get any chance I get to to, to really spend with them, uh, I try to make that a priority. I try to put that first. But um, you know, obviously, football is is extremely important to me. Uh, my family means a lot as well. Um, but I probably say that's just the biggest thing. Um, football is football, um, and then when I'm with my family, you know, they they come first. You know, and so I just try to keep that focus, keep that balance. Um, but in the back of my mind, it's like football, football, football. You know. <laughs> You know, Ty, one, one question that I, I definitely wanted to ask you is we've talked about COVID. We've talked about the difficulties of trying to, you know, be excellent, even though everybody's obviously striving to beat you guys. Uh, what has been your most enjoyable part of this unusual season? Oh, man. Uh, you know, I just love to be around my teammates. Um, I, I love to be around those guys. I love to see those guys do well. Um, I love to see them have success. I probably say this year, you know, I've been getting great joy really just watching, you know, guys like Willie Gay, the Jerry Sneed, you know, Big Turk on the D line, all those guys kind of growing to young men, Mike Dana, um, you know, over time. And, you know, like, like we talked about earlier, we didn't have those Thursday nights at Tyrus House. And so, you know, these young men have really took it upon them themselves to kind of, you know, carry themselves in a way that's, you know, respectable, you know, and that's the standard. So, um, you know, I probably say just, just being around those young guys, I, you know, every day I feel like I'm the oldest guy in the room. At least that's how they talk to me. Um, but uh, I think I get a lot of life out of just being around these guys, um, seeing those guys do well, seeing those guys succeed, you know, Bashar Brilliant, you know, C. Ward, all these guys, you know, having a success in their own way. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it, it feels good, you know, to, to be a part of that, to be around that Dan Sorensen, to kind of see him, you know, have the year that he had. It's just been a blessing to kind of watch everybody around me kind of have, you know, their success. Just out of curiosity, what is an, uh, a typical Thursday night at Turan's house in a regular <laughs> season? So, uh, some of them are we're probably playing cards in a corner. Uh, some of us are watching the game. Probably got, you know, other half, you know, trying to eat all the wings, you know, in the back. Um, so, uh, but we're just bonding, you know. We're just talking. Uh, we're talking about how we grew up. Um, you know, we're talking about life outside the game, talking about relationships and, you know, talking about motivation. It's a lot of a lot of different conversations uh, that, that takes place in, in, in Tyron's basement. <laughs> That'll do it for today. Thanks to our production staff and everyone who helps make Sportsbeat KC happen. Derek Donovan, Beth Welsh, Jeff Rosen, Chris Fickett, and Savannah Smith. Links to Chief Stories can be found in the show notes and on KansasCity.com. Hey, we've got another deal for you, especially for those that want to deep dive into the Stars' terrific Chiefs coverage. For a limited time, you can subscribe to Sports Pass for 99 cents a month. That's right, 99 pennies a month. After three months, it auto-renews at $5.99 a month unless you cancel. How do you get it? You go to kansascity.com slash sportspass2020. That's kansascity.com slash sportspass2020. Do you want more than just sports coverage? I know I do. Check out the entire Kansas City Star product. Sports news features, commentary, and analysis, the whole thing. You get all the stories written by my talented colleagues, plus additional news, sports, and business coverage with the e-edition. The details for all of these deals can be found at account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. And if you're having trouble hunting down 
any of these offers, send me an email, bkirkoff at kcstar.com, and I'll get you to the right place. So whether it is the sports pass or the full subscription, you're getting in supporting the best sports and news coverage in Kansas City and helping us produce programs like Sports BKC. Thanks for listening. We'll be back on Wednesday with another episode.